Welcome to Quick Bites, the lunchtime live stream with your tech integration specialist, Scott Conway. Welcome and thank you for joining us today on this episode of Quick Bites. Today we are going to discuss and demonstrate Google Forms, um, an introduction really to Google Forms. I uh, kind of put the cart before the horse. If you watched my last session, it was more about the specific uh, approach using Google Forms for online quizzes, and um, which is a great use of Google Forms, but there's so many other uses for Google Forms, and uh, I'd like to give you at least an introduction today to using Google Forms, getting set up, getting started. Um, and then from there, it's really your own imagination that will take you to the more intermediate and advanced use of Google Forms. Um, just want to remind you, if you're joining us live, there is the chat bar out to the right-hand side that you can ask questions throughout the episode, and uh, we'll try to get to them by the end of the session. So, All right, let's get right into this. I want to take you through, really start to finish on this. Um, this is our uh, demo folder on Google Drive that we've kind of been working in. And uh, I want to start from here because I want to show you there's two ways to create a Google Form. Uh, the first is in the upper left hand corner under new. You can click on that, go down to more. And then from there, you'll slide over to the right and you'll see Google Forms is an option. Um, it is not one of the base defaults like Docs, Sheets, and Slides, but Google Forms is right at the top of the next uh, list over there. And if you do slide to the right and hover over that little uh, <clears throat> greater than symbol, you will see that you can select a blank form or from a template. And this is not something I, I don't think I've ever showed before, but uh, it is there. These little uh, symbols allow you to pull in from templates. Um, there are people that create these templates. There's some canned templates, obviously, that will get you started. Um, but uh, if you want, you can uh, actually take a look at that. It'll take you to the Google Forms templates, and you might be able to find something. Um, well, clearly, there's not a whole lot here in the Cheshire Public Schools library, but if you go to general, that's really where you want to kind of start out. And uh, this will kind of just give you a, a base to work from. And you can see there's quite a bit in here, and it's categorized, too. Um, there's blank quiz, an exit ticket, assessment, a worksheet, course evaluation, uh, and then under there's personal topic, uh, you can get contact information if you're trying to collect that. Again, there's a, a ton of different uses for Google Forms, uh, and uh, I will probably save ourselves some time today and actually use one of these. Then under the work, you see there's event feedback and order form, job application, time off request, uh, customer feedback. So there's uh, not a whole lot in here. It's not huge, but there's at least some templates that will get you started. Um, why don't we go ahead and use the exit ticket? That's something that uh, educators like to do with a little informal assessment as the students are leaving the class just to kind of get an idea how much did they learn from what you shared and taught that day. And um, so this is kind of the cheater's way out. <laughs> I, I got to be honest, this is, this is too easy because look what it just did for us. It created this form for us. And uh, you know, if, if this is what I want and it's exactly what I want, Perfect. I'm done. I just created my Google form. Now I just got to worry about getting it out to uh, the recipients and uh, let them take the quiz or the uh, the uh, form and answer it, and uh, and then look at my feedback and and we'll talk about that. But that's kind of secondary to creation of the form. But I just at least wanted to show you that there are some templates there. Uh, you can create templates and sh uh, save your Google forms as templates for your organization. You saw that there was really only one in our organization, so clearly it's not being utilized all that much, but you can save your, your Google Form as a template and then share that out and make it available to others. So if uh, curriculum is trying to do something that they want all you know, elementary school teachers to utilize, you can create one form, make it a template, put it out there, and everybody kind of utilizes that one. Now that we're in here, though, and we've got this template, this exit ticket template, um, I could change everything about this. I don't need to keep it the way it is. I kind of like that header image, though. That's really pretty cool. And um, I've got my name, obviously. And then as I slide down, you'll see this little uh, insert bar will roll with me. And uh, they've got a couple questions. Looks like they're, they want the name, the email, 
What's one important thing you learned in class today? Do you feel prepared for today's lesson? Why or why not? And what would you, what would help make today's lesson more effective? So this is just, you know, that quick subjective style feedback. There's nothing objective to this. So you're not asking on a scale of one to five, um, or you're not asking a numeric uh, or, you know, um, multiple select question, nothing objective to this. It's all subjective. But again, maybe that's what you needed to do. Um, so that's how you create from a template. I'm going to close that and uh, I want to go back up over here to um, new, go down to more, Google Forms and just click new form. I can also right click from here, go down to more and Google Forms is there. So right clicking in the white area out here within the folder you wanted in can, can get that and achieve it or you can go from new. Um, starting from scratch though, this is what it looks like fresh out of the box, a brand new untitled form. Uh, the first thing I suggest is you go up and you title this. Uh, let's call it exit ticket. We'll show you just how to build exactly what took me two seconds to bring in. Let's, uh, let's show you how to do that. So as I type here the, the name of the uh, file, it, you can see that it pre-populated it there for me or automatically populated it for me in the name of the form, which will show to the recipient or the end user. Uh, I can give a form description. It could be something like, please take a few minutes to answer. It's really meant for instructions. What do you want to, you know, are there any special instructions to your students? In this case, it's just please take a few minutes to answer these questions before you leave class today. Uh, and then you can see it gives me one question untitled. Um, you know, and, and here's where you can, you can see by default it comes up with multiple choice. I will tell you this, if you watch the last session or if you watch it in the future, you'll see that these questions are very intuitive. Google is using some artificial intelligence uh, technology to really look at the question that you're typing and one, suggest an, a question type for you if it's not the correct one at the beginning here, and or make suggestions for answer choices. So uh, let's just uh, do this one. Is sky blue? And watch what happens. Now it leaves it as a multiple choice question, but look what the suggestions are for the answers. Yes, no, maybe. And I can click here to add all. And I'm done. That question is built. Um, now, I do have a couple other options here. I can, you can see here it says add image. I can add images. So my answer choices, if you want to use this with a real low grade level, you know, kindergarten, first grade, and you want the answer choices to actually be images, you can do that. And you would insert your image here. You'll see the little icon populate to the right of the answer. So you can do uh, text and image answer choices. Now, if I didn't like this being a multiple choice question, I would have to manually change it at this point. And you can see that we have quite a few different question types. Your subjective uh, answer choices are up here, short answer and paragraph, basically text answer. Your objective style questions are here, multiple choice, check boxes uh, if you have multi-select, multiple correct answers. Or, or multiple options possible. Drop down, which is the same thing as multiple choice. You get one right answer or one possible selection, but the drop down concatenates or shortens the listing. So if you, uh, good answer, or a good example of this is if you want to ask somebody what state they're from or their state abbreviation. Well, if you list out all 50 state abbreviations, that's going to take up a lot of real estate in your form and it's going to make your form really long. So instead of using multiple choice for that, you might choose drop down and pre-fill it. It takes up one line of text and then it when you click on it, it will make this little drop down menu that expands momentarily while you make your selection and then it retracts. So that's the difference between those two is the amount of space it takes up in the form. 
Uh, file upload is uh, available to in-domain users. So you have to be an organizational user in order for file upload to work. So you cannot use this with an outsider, like a parent or a guardian. It won't work. You've got to be in the same domain in order for that to happen. So there's a little bit of a limitation with that, but it does work really well. It allows you to upload and set some parameters for your uploads, like file types, file sizes, number of files. Um, really cool feature. But again, only available to in-domain only, so within your organization, your students or your teachers, your staff member. Uh, then you get down to your linear scale. That's that 1 to 10 on a 1 to 10 scale uh, or 0 to 5. You've got some uh, adjustments you can make there. Uh, if you're asking that type of question, you know, how did we do feedback type question, uh, linear scale is really good for that. Then you've got multiple choice grid and chalk checkbox grid. Uh, now the difference between these two, just like multiple choice and checkboxes at the top, first off is the number of selections possible. So multiple choice, you get one per row, one per column basically, and the checkbox grid, you can have multiple per row, multiple per column. You do have some parameters you can set, some limitations you can set once you get in there, um, but it gives you the ability to select by row and column. Uh, the best example I can give you for this and how I use it is when I do course selection for my incoming seventh graders. I ask them, please rank from one to four your uh, first, second, third, and fourth choice for your world language selections. Now, we only have four la world languages that we offer, so I have them across the top, uh, you know, uh, German, Latin, Spanish, and um, French. And then going down, I have first choice, second choice, third choice, fourth choice, and then as they go, they just check the box for that column and that choice. So that's the best example I have for it, uh, is uh, kind of ranking things in a, uh, a selection style um, uh, orientation. But it, it does work. I don't use them often, but they do work really well when you have something like that. Date and time are just that if you're trying to organize an event. You might want to ask, uh, you know, what's, you know, please put in your, your best date uh, this week or your, your best date that week. And then you can kind of sort and organize and filter by that. And same with time. Uh, these two work well if you're trying to schedule an event of some sort. So those are all of your question styles or types. There's quite a few. You can really get creative with these. Um, and uh, and and your you know let your let your imagination run wild. There's a lot of stuff you can do here. Uh, moving down below, you could add additional options here. Um, just for the sake of it, you can see I can just manually type that in. You can also allow for an other. So this would be where they're allowed to write in their own answer choice. If you don't offer it, but you want to offer an option for them to do it, they can write in their own. Moving down below, I have uh, per question now, again, we're still on just one question, you have the option to duplicate that question. Let's say you, you like everything about this parameter-wise except for the question. You like the answer choices, you're going to reuse them, duplicate it. Save yourself some time. This, uh, this setup that they have here is designed to save you time as you go through and create. You can also delete the question. You can make it required or not. Just be careful when you do that because if, if there's someone who can't possibly answer the question, now you're forcing them to answer that question. Um, and there may, need, may, may not be a way for them to get through that without it. So you really need to think about all the people that will possibly be taking your form or submitting information via your form and all the possible answer choices and situations. I know that can be daunting, um, but you do need to do that because you could back someone into a corner if you do make it required. The nice thing about making questions required is you, you force their hand. They have to answer that question in order to get through to the end and submit. So data accuracy, data collection, uh, you know, those considerations requiring a question can be a good thing too. You do have some additional options. You can add a description with like, like almost like help text to the question. If you want to kind of give them a little bit of guidance, you can do that. 
Uh, you do have the option to go to section based on answer. This is a more advanced use of Google Forms, but let, I call it a fork in the road. You get to a point where you ask them you know, a, a certain question, and based on their answer, they might be able to skip over a whole section of questions in that form. You might not have to ask them. It's a time saver for the other person. Like, why bother asking them to answer all these other questions if they don't apply to them? So use that fork in the road and go to a different section based on their answers. Everyone will end up at the end and submitting, uh, but you might save them some time. Shuffle option order, you can do that here with your, um, you know, your options to, uh, uh, to answer questions. Uh, you can do that. It gives you just some variability. If you use this for a quiz, that might be a good option so that you can reduce the amount of looking over the shoulder type thing. So those are your options there. And then out to the right, we have this insert bar. And you can see at the top, it starts with add a question. If you move down, we can import questions. You can do that now from uh, other forms that you uh, have created. So if you've created something and you want to make kind of a new or hybrid form of other forms, you can do that. You can add a title and a description. So if you have a, a, a almost like a, a visual break in your form, you could do a title and section. You can add images and video from YouTube, that is, uh, in here and embed it and ask questions based on the video or based on the image. Uh, and then you have the ability to add in sections. So this is like page breaks where you're going to get them to focus on just this topic on this page and then they're going to click next and go to a whole new page and that's really adding in kind of like a page break so it's a great idea to uh, to offer that but here I'll add another question um, let's see if I can trigger this to automatically uh, the sky is blue it's kind of using the same thing um, I'll do this on a oops, scale from zero to five and watch what happens it automatically changes to a linear scale it automatically puts zero to five and then all I have to do is add in my descriptors never and always you know and and, and I would have had to uh, obviously oh I'm sorry actually hold on let's see if we can do this there it is uh, sorry, that's my own typing fault. There we go. Um, how often do you attend? I can't type today. Class. There you go. Uh, often, uh, zero, never, always. So there's a linear scale type question. Um, and, and it's just, uh, this was an attempt to show you kind of how does Google use its AI to figure out what are you asking? What's the best possible question type for that? Um, so I just wanted to show you. It's really pretty cool. And it's meant to help you make your quiz go faster as you building these things out. Now quickly, I want to go up here to the palette. If you don't like the purple color that it comes with, you can change that with some predefined. You've got background colors, font styles. You can choose a header image like you saw in the other one. Um, uh, maybe I'll just switch to that to show you that it's possible. You can always preview what you're working on with the eye icon. And there you go. This is what it's going to look like to the end user. And one thing I'll say about this is that it, the format of a Google form is so universal. You can use this on a tablet, uh, a, a whole widescreen projector, all the way down to a small cell phone. You know, the, the smallest uh, smartphone you could think of. It is formatted really, really well. Um, so any device. It is device neutral. You really, this is a, a great tool across devices, but this is just kind of a preview of what the form looks like. And you could actually leave that tab open, come back and make some changes, come over here and hit refresh, and you would see what it looks like again. And unless there's multiple pages, you would have to kind of answer some of the questions to get through it to see some of those uh, other pages. And then the only other thing I'm going to talk about are the responses. Now it's built in and Google does a, a much more phenomenal job of building in the responses and some analytics. They're going to give you colored pie charts and bar charts based on the type of question and the data that's being inputted. You're going to get some really great graphics and charts and analysis. Now your subjective style questions, your text entry stuff, not so great. 
Uh, but from an objective style question, you're really going to get some great feedback right here built in. You can copy and paste those pictures of those graphs out into other documents. Really awesome, really cool. If you want to do some more advanced level analysis of the data or use a, an add-on such as Autocrat or something else to help process your data after it's uh, been submitted, you would want to then click on this create spreadsheet. It will create a Google spreadsheet of your uh, data that's being inputted and then from the Google sheet you can obviously go well above and beyond with your charts, your uh, add-ons, your integrations, feedback, communication, you can create other documents from the data that's being submitted. You have a whole host of ideas if you move this to a Google sheet. Now the response data will always stay here in the Google form but again, you can also have it go to a Google Sheet live real time. It shows up and, and it submits it to that spreadsheet. So you can have a master kind of spreadsheet of data, uh, if you will. And uh, so that's just kind of a, a quick entry into the Google Forms world. You really can create a whole host of different uses for this. It could be something from just collecting parent email addresses at the beginning of the school year. It could be collecting student feedback uh, from an, an, uh, an assignment, uh, feedback or an exit ticket type. You know, what did you learn today? It could be a registration form for sports or, or you name it. They're really, the sky is the limit on this and it's really up to you and how you creatively use this to uh, to really collect data and you can really kind of confine it so uh, they have to do certain things certain questions are required versus others um, so it looks like I have one question um, how do I share okay so they've created an exit form for athletes to evaluate their season how do I share results with coaching staff um, pretty pie charts without making coaches editors on the form all right so and this question is pretty universal so I've created the form I've got my nice pretty uh, pie charts and bar charts and how do I share that data out you could try to do a screen print from it um, if you move it to the spreadsheet you could obviously share that spreadsheet with them uh, but the the pie charts and the graphs uh, you may want to just right click copy image uh, so once you get in there to your responses, you can um, you can do that. You can right click copy image. And what you might want to do is just paste that into a Google Doc. So take all of your responses from here because you don't want to share this, the Google form with all those coaches or all those teachers or all those parents. But take the feedback, the pie charts and the bar graphs, right click copy image and paste it into a Google Doc. And then that Google Doc gets shared out either with edit or just view access. So you really can quickly and easily come into this form and, and do that. So that would be my best suggestion. If you want to share the responses with someone, uh, you can do that. And I don't think uh, you do have download responses. You could do also print all responses. But that might, be get, that might become very lengthy and uh, it might not be formatted all that well. So just be careful. Depends on how many questions you ask. Um, my best recommendation would be to come in here, grab those graphs as you get them, right click, or uh, there's usually a three dots for the graph and it'll say copy image. Paste it into a Google Doc and share the Google Doc out with them. So that looks like that's all of our questions for today. Again, I want to thank you for joining us. We went a little over, but uh, starting a form is a, a pretty important process. It's got a couple different facets to it. As long as you know how to get in there, add new questions and sections and how to format this, get up and running. As soon as you're ready, the best way to send this to the person to, for, for them to take it is either right from the preview. This link right here, this URL at the top, that's the URL to the form. It's long and crazy, but that's it. You can also come right up to the send button and you've got uh, the ability to send it out in an email. You can even include the form in the email. You can get the link right here. Uh, just as I showed you in the preview, there it is, really long. They do offer an optional shorten it, a shorten URL, and you can also embed it into an iframe using HTML into a website if you want to do that. So send form up here is where you're going to get that end link or you can directly send it out from email here. Uh, but this document that you're working at and what I'm working on and showing you is just for the creator of the form. 
Um, that is it. You need to send it out in order for it to get to the person that is going to take the form. So the end user that's doing the submission, they'll use this link here and it will look like this. Again, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I appreciate your time and hope you, hopefully you will join us in the future.